All right, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare both the Euler and the Runge cutoff fourth order methods to the exact solution of this first order differential equation that I have here. So as you may recall, this is the logistic equation, and we solved this using the Euler method a few videos ago. And we found that the Euler method wasn't too bad, but obviously there were some problems with the, in terms of the relative error. So what I want to do now is to compare the two methods and see how their accuracies compare in terms of the step size. So what I have here is I have chosen a, an initial size for the population of 10. And this is the analytical solution where A is just related to the initial population like this. So for the other method, we know that it's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is replace the first derivative by some kind of first order or first finite difference approximation, like the forward finite difference approximation. And then all we need to do is solve for the value pi plus 1. So this is the update equation that we're going to put inside of a loop. Now for the RK4 method, it's a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more elaborate. So essentially, what you have is, uh, of course, I forgot the h here. So, But essentially, you know that you're going to have your update equation at the end of the loop, and it is going to look like this. So in this case, instead of calling it h, I'm just going to call it delta t. At the end of the day, it's not, it's, there really is no difference between the two, so you will see that it's going to be the same. 3k3, sorry, this should be 2 here, plus k4. So we have our update equation, which depends on the previous value of the population, plus this whole bunch of terms is uh, here, k1 all the way to k4. And we know that we have these things here, so the, the, the really hard part of using RK4 is just setting up your equation. Because you have to start off by setting up some function of the first derivative in terms of everything else. Then you set up K1 equals to that function, but it is going to be evaluated at the points Ti and Pi. And then you do the same for all the other values, but each value is going to use the previous value of K. And then in the end, you're just going to add them together. So... Notice that h is just equal to the step size delta t. So essentially, if we define delta t for Euler method, that's the same step size that we're going to use for this one. So this is essentially your equations. This is what you will put inside of a loop. Okay, so now let's have a look at the octave code that I wrote here. So you'll notice there are a few additions that usually don't appear in the other examples, but this is just a little bit um, more of an elaborate code. I just want to show you the three solutions, the exact solution, which I have written here in terms of that function we derived in the beginning. Then we're going to have the Euler solution. So basically here I have all my input parameters. I chose a step size of 0 0.1 at the beginning k equals 0 0.5, t goes from 0 to 1, and then population size of 10. The Euler solution is written in this chunk of the code. So we have, or we create an empty vector of values for Euler solution. Then we input the initial value into it, and we create the loop where we put this update equation here. So that's the update equation for the Euler method. And now we're going to have the range cut of fourth order here. So the first thing we do is we declare this function f that we have here. So I have called it PRK4, just to stand for solution for RK4 method. And then we create an empty vector for that, assign the values of the initial population to it. And now make sure that you know that your step size is being used here, because essentially I just copied this code from the one that I used in the previous video. So instead of just changing everything to dt, I just said let h equal to dt. And then essentially I just have the code here. So you'll notice that in this case here, I did not write the h in front of the f. All I did was factor it out of all the k values and put it here outside. So it's pretty much the same thing. But here, because I just copied and pasted this from the previous code, it's basically here. But it's the same thing, as long as you make sure you're not multiplying it here. And this is the RK4 loop. All right, so now for the error estimation, what I did was I wrote... Uh, an error vector for basically the Euler compared to the exact solution and then for the RK4 solution compared to the exact 
and then I have my plots here so basically I'm gonna plot both of them on the same figure window so I have given them some colors blue green and red just to differentiate them better some labels and then uh, the same for the error so let's see what this gives us okay so when the step size is 0 0.1 basically because we're going from 0 to 1 seconds we're jumping by 0 0.1 seconds so that's this is 10 points in total so look at what we have here we have the Euler solution it just goes straight down and then it goes horizontal that's very very inaccurate because we see that the exact solution is right here but look at RK4 even by taking only 10 points look at how accurate it is the, the it approximates the solution almost perfectly it, and this is a really big step size we're only using 10 points here and now look at the error in the solutions. Well, for the Euler method, we have this kind of weird thing here where we have the uh, thing diverges away and then it starts to converge again. But the relative error is quite large here. Look at the RK4, for example. It stays pretty much at zero the whole time. So that's a really, really big difference between the two methods. Now let's decrease the step size even further just to see what happens. So let's say we make this equal to 0 0.01. I want to see what this looks like now. All right, so this looks a little bit more promising. So let's just expand this out to see. Okay, so we can see that the exact solution and the RK4 are pretty much overlapping by this point. You can't really tell them apart. But the Euler solution now, it's reasonably more accurate, but you can see that there's still a gap in between. Now, if you look at the relative error here, you can see that the Euler method still retains some error, even though it's quite small now, it only goes up to 0.035%. You can see that the RK4, by comparison, it just stays flat out at zero. In fact, it's not actually zero, but it's so small, we cannot really even resolve it from zero here. So we would need to zoom into here to see what the actual relative error is. But this just comes to show that RK4 is just so much better than Euler method. I mean, it's a little bit harder to implement computationally, but once you know how to use it, you're never going to use the Euler method again because it, there's really no point. They take pretty much the same amount of time to compute. RK4 is a little bit slower, but you really won't notice the difference. And the really good thing is that you can see that RK4 is a lot more accurate, even for big step sizes. So let's make this even... Let, let's make this even smaller, let's say 0 0.001, just to see how the two compare. So we should see a significant difference now. Well, now all of them are overlapping, but you can see now that the Euler method, it still goes up. And you can see that the error in the Euler method actually scales by a factor of 10. It, it scales pretty much in the same way with, uh, with respect to the step size. And that is something that we expect because the truncation error of the Euler method is just uh, in the order of the step size, delta x to the power of 1. Whereas the, the truncation error of the Ranchkara method is uh, delta x in the order of power to, um, to the power of 5. So basically for Euler, because we're using a forward finite difference approximation, we have big O of delta x. So this is a very large error, but for RK4, because we're taking a fourth order accuracy, our O is actually going to be delta X to the power of 5. So this is going to be much smaller than that. This is always going to be so much smaller. So we can see it in the graphs here. This, the RK4 pretty much just stays at zero the whole time. So it's a lot more stable and it is a lot more accurate. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the RK4 compares in terms of the harmonic oscillator problem or the simple harmonic motion problem that we solve using the Euler method. And we'll see why it is more stable. You won't see that diverging kind of pattern that you saw with the Euler method. But hopefully this video has clarified the difference between the two and how you implement each of them. The Euler method is a lot more straightforward, but obviously you're going to sacrifice accuracy quite a lot. Whereas RK4 is going to give you a much better solution, but obviously it takes a little bit more time to set up.